And when you see this film tonight, you will not forget Corporal James W. King. Well, we just happen to have with us tonight the James King's great-great-grandson, Mr. Eric R. Faust. Mr. Faust holds a Bachelor of Science degree in computer engineering with a cognate in history from Michigan State University. He's uh, enjoyed a long and successful career as a computer engineer, and now, good for us, he devotes all of his professional time to writing, and writing specifically about the Civil War. Two books of his that are relevant tonight are one, Conspicuous Gallantry. This is an in-depth story about his, about his great-great-grandfather. And uh, the second is the 11th Michigan Volunteer Infantry in the Civil War. Uh, these two books will be available at the museum store following tonight's show. And if you smile real nice, Eric just might sign a copy for you. <laughs> They're great reads. Uh, before the show, I was introduced to Mr. Faust and his family, his wife, and his two children. They traveled here all the way from California to be with us, so we're wow. grateful for them and come, for coming out here. <laughs> Since they came this far, I might as well let him have a microphone and talk to us for a few minutes. So please welcome Mr. Eric Faust. Good afternoon, Doug. Thank you for the kind introduction. I told my family if I looked out and saw dogs in the audience, I would be very distracted, and that was so true. <laughs> <laughs> Love dogs. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Mike Moore for giving us all the perfect excuse to gather on Veterans Day. And a heartfelt thank you for every veteran who joins us tonight for your service and your sacrifices. We all have people we think of on Veterans Day, usually people close to us. I was born much too late to meet my great-great-grandfather. James W. King, who served in the 11th Michigan Infantry. But for me, he is high on the list of veterans I think of on the 11th day of the 11th month. Duty was a sacred word in his day, and only duty could have swayed my ancestor to go off to war and leave behind the girl of his dreams, the girl who would become my great-great-grandmother. James King referred to himself as just another of the countless farm boys who went off to war. In his words, it is because I loved my home so dear that I left it. He referred to the Northern War effort as one of the noblest causes that mankind were ever engaged in. He did his duty and more, suffering two crippling wounds and earning a nomination for the Medal of Honor. I will leave the rest of his wartime story to the amazing documentary we're all about to watch. One of King's war wounds rendered his right arm useless for anything more strenuous than writing. After the war, he married us that sweetheart of his and returned south to lease and manage a cotton plantation. He loved being down south, and although he considered the credit Confederate cause treason to his dying day, he held no personal grudges. He returned north in part because that feeling was not always neutral. <laughs> <laughs> they say the pen is mightier than the sword, whoever they may be. To my knowledge, no one has ever tested a pen against a good rifle. <laughs> but in any case, King sat down with his gun and picked up a pen after the war to continue fighting for his beliefs. He went from being just another farm boy, as he put it, to chief editor of the Lansing Republican, Michigan's primary newspaper for the party of Abraham Lincoln in those days. King considered it the newspaper's goal to inform, reform, and elevate the people. He proudly stated that his paper never denied a fair hearing to an opponent, and he retired, in his words, with the belief that I have no personal enemies. To me, the lesson of my great-great-grandfather's life is to show courage in the defense of your convictions, but also never to lose sight of the humanity of those who disagree with you. I'd like to recognize some fellow King descendants in the audience tonight. Rebecca Schenk, who many of you know, Michael and Howard King, all my dear cousins, and my children, Adrian and Nina. Also, one honorary came, my wife Sandra, uh, without whom those books that Jeff mentioned would not exist. I would like to close by sharing an excerpt from a poem by Ralph Chaplin, which the 11th Michigan Infantry quoted in its last ever annual reunion invitation. 
Mourn not the dead, but rather mourn the apathetic throng, the cowed and the meek, who see the world's great anguish and its wrong, and dare not speak. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Eric, for making history so personal tonight. We very, very much appreciate you taking all the time to, to travel this way and to share with us. Thank you very, very much. And now, once again, the Sturgis Wind Symphony.